What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey, and this is eBay Miniature Rescues. We've got some stuff to do on the hobby desk this week, so come on, let's take a look. So I know that last week I had mentioned that we're going to have to kind of move beyond the whole baby diaries aspect of this channel. And I think a lot of people took that to mean that we're just not doing any of the stuff that we were doing before, but that's, that's not the case. What I meant by that is that at this point, life with a baby at home and hobbying is just life. And so I want to continue to make these videos using this kind of more vlog style, because that's what fits my lifestyle at this point to make hobby videos with you. So that's what I meant. I probably should have been a little more clear as far as the death guard army goes. That was another point of, I wasn't sure. I'm still going to be working on it. I haven't shown the, the whole thing yet. We haven't even finished the night or the tank. So it's not that those things aren't getting done. It's that a majority of the army is done and it's almost time to just move on completely because it's almost done, which is a good thing and a sad thing. So in case you were confused, that's, that's what was going on. Okay, so now that we have that established, why don't we take a look at the project we're going to be working on, which happens to be part of the Death Guard army. We're going to finish up this rhino and make it look proper disgusting for this Death Guard army. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. So why don't we head to the table, figure it out. First off, let's do a quick recap of the model. I shared this project a few weeks ago and started working on some of the parts for it. You can see that there are an awful lot of issues with the model itself. The body does fit together, but the doors have been covered up with plastic card. If we were going for a standard marine rhino, I would probably leave on the plastic and the original doors and just paint over them. A little battle damage, but not Nurgle enough for a Death Guard transport. I 3D printed out a back door, side door, top hatch, and a dozer blade for this rhino. None of these parts affect its rules, but it does make the tank look way better, and it fits right into the army. The dozer blade specifically has that Death Guard aesthetic that I'm looking for, and it does a great job at matching my Plague Burst crawlers while still being the proper scale for the rhino itself. If you are interested in this kit I used to flash up my rhino, it's in the description below. Let's get to the real work now. I first disassembled the tank. For the most part, the large pieces can stay together, and that'll make it much easier to put back together later. Some of the smaller parts like the top hatch have to go because it's getting a full replacement. I also popped off the gunner on top so I could convert him into a plague marine. With everything separated, I'll need to use a Dremel to get the rest of the plastic card out of the recesses that it was glued into. The hull of this rhino is severely battle damaged, so I don't have to be too careful when cutting into this plastic. In the end, it all lends itself to the idea that this tank belongs in the Death Guard army. It doesn't take too long to cut through the plastic card, and with that we can move on to reassembly. I was having a real tough time with the rear hatch, and I realized way later in this project, way too late in fact, that I kept trying to put it on upside down. It dry fit fine before, but of course trying to put it on backwards doesn't really tend to work very well. The top hatch needed a little more room around the edges, so I cut away a little bit more plastic until it fit right into the slots. The side door, on the other hand, like yeah, nice and snug, looks awesome.
A while back, I 3D printed some large spores to be used as basing materials for some other project. I thought they were perfect to fit onto this rhino. I drilled out one of the smokestacks to fit a spore into, and used some existing holes in the hole to fit a couple more. This is definitely a unique touch for this rhino without going too far over the top, and I like it. The gunner was a pretty quick fix. A couple of new Plague Marine shoulder pads, and then I just put him right back on top of the tank. So far so good, now we just have to paint the thing. Well, awesome. So our tank is basically put together at this point. Now, because I want to use this as a rhino, it's pretty bare bones. Most of the looks of it are just aesthetically pleasing, I suppose. It doesn't have to be anything specific. It's really just to transport troops around. I don't even know if I'm going to do that in a game. I have no idea. Just thought it'd be a cool idea. So at this point, everything's put together. Looks funky. Works great for the army. We're going to take it outside. We're going to prime it get everything ready to go, and then maybe we'll put some paint on it. We'll see how much of the rest of the day there is. I'm not sure what's gonna happen yet, so. And in case you're wondering, the baby is in here. Still not the baby diaries, technically. She's gonna be around. That's life, right? So you might hear baby noises, but uh, I promise you, she was not in here while I was using the Dremel, I promise. <laughs> Let's get to painting. The plan is to tackle this just like the rest of the Death Guard army that I've been working on. If you are new to this channel, then no worries. We're gonna walk through it once again. Basically, it's a black and brown primer layer followed by chipping medium, a base coat of ivory followed by some shadows with burnt umber. This sets us up for a sweet chipping effect. Here's the thing with this project though. Things start to take a turn for the worst as soon as I start reactivating the chipping medium. In hindsight, there are a couple of things I could have done to prevent every issue I'm about to face. So let's go through it so you don't have the same terrible results that I did. At first, things seem to be going well. Using a toothbrush and some water, I activate the chipping medium once again and get some good paint damage all over the tank. Exactly what I'm looking for so that it matches my Plague Burst crawlers and pretty much everything else in my Death Guard army. I move into applying a dark metallic all over the trim and a little bits of metal on the tank. Now for the nasty bit. I'm using the standard brown enamel and mineral spirits mix to get that grime all over this tank. I've used this technique loads of times and I've never really had any issues applying it, but for some reason the paint was reacting to something and causing it to get sticky and start taking paint up while spreading it around. I've honestly never had this happen quite this way before, and I think it was the enamels reacting with something in the chipping medium. Either way, it made a huge mess of the tank. In a strange attempt to try and save it some way, I tried spraying ivory over parts of the tank to try and make it look at least a little nicer. It really didn't help. My next thought, of course, going down the rabbit hole, was to spray the entire tank down with Plague Bearer Contrast Paint. What a thought that was. I mean, when you think about it, it kind of makes sense, or it could to someone. Anyways, the idea was to put a little color into it and throw on some shadows. Maybe go a little bit more Nurgle green with it. So it was pretty much right here when I realized that that was a terrible idea. Yeah, so now what I'm gonna do is kind of work myself backwards, repainting this tank. Now, like I said, it's a good thing we have the airbrush because it's thin. 
So it's not a huge deal, but you know, time invested and all that. So now with the fact that there's a color variation and there's some other stuff going on, we're actually gonna try and get a little bit more out of this tank. We're gonna start to chip it again after laying down the white and kind of see where it goes. Yeah. Back to ivory and I'm gonna hit the tank pretty hard from the top down. There are just hints of green in the shadows, which actually look pretty rad. They are subtle, but still pretty rad. And since there is still technically chipping medium under this paint, I went back in and did another round of chipping. This time, being a little more careful about my application, and even using my fingernail to go over edges to just scuff them up. It's kind of funny, but the Plague Marine wasn't really touched during any of this, so he's actually looking alright. A little bit of touch up for the metal all over the tank, and then an abrupt switch to painting chevrons onto the dozer blade. Look out, it's coming at you super fast this time. In order to match the blades on my other tanks, I take a little bit of yellow and go over the blade. At the bottom, I add a bit of orange brown and give it that sweet, sweet gradient. Now things are starting to come together a little bit. For weathering, I started with some verdigris on the metallics. This really dulls down that metal and makes it look super old. And that really plays in well for something all battered and beaten like this tank. I introduced some purple into the shadows of the metallics as well just giving this an extra level of dimension, kind of like the body of the tank. It's subtle, but totally worth it. Some purple and pink onto the spores and headlights to match the army pop color, which in most cases is kind of a fluorescent pink. After overspraying a little bit onto the tank, I used some ivory to just clean that up and we pretty much call that good. So now that we've pretty much gotten on the other side of the bad stuff, we've got some good chipping, we've got a good color variation, I put more colors into the metallics and that kind of thing. It's starting to look a lot like the other models that we have in this line, and that's a really good thing. The last thing that we're going to need to do is streaking grind. So now that we're in a good place, I decided to kind of hit save and varnish the entire thing. And that way, when we come back in with the streaking grime this time, there's a little bit more control. So we're gonna do a couple different things. Like I said, I varnished it, it's gonna lock it in, and we're gonna use an airbrush to apply this brown enamel. And that way, we have an even coverage over the whole thing, and we can take it off and really have way more control than we did before. And this should, should do the trick. So let's try it. The varnish really ensures that I won't run into the same problem as last time, and it gives that brown enamel something to slide around on and lets me use a thick makeup sponge to drag down and remove the excess. Doing this will give streaks of brown. This is more like it.
Once those enamels are dry, I'm going to use some rust pigments to give the tracks and lower half the tank a little bit more life. So for some reason, painting this tank happened to be a little more difficult than normal. And I'm not exactly sure why. Sometimes we run into issues where we think things are gonna go a certain way and they just don't. And as painters, it's our job to push through the difficult moments like that, the ugly phase, generally speaking, and keep going until something starts to pop out, until you start to see a detail that you could pick up on and exploit, so to speak. I think sometimes we just hit a wall and it's important to remember that it happens to all of us it happens to the best of us and to not let that discourage you from continuing to paint and to try and get better i ended up this project feeling pretty good i still feel really good about it i actually when i was doing the final photos i don't know just it, it really stood out to me like the amount of actual work that went into this model that I didn't necessarily realize. I wasn't being active about the painting process and seeing those final photos after I was pretty happy made me think back and go, okay, you know, if I had been a little more active thinking about it and trying to not worry about so much the end result, I think I would have had more fun along the way. Thank you for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you like something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.